welcome to. I, actually, I should have done that a little bit better because yeah. this is episode ten. So we made it to ten episodes. So do the longer, all right. It's not even a full season yet on TV. I think isn't that like thirteen now? Yeah, I think that's the equivalent of that. Well, and depending uh, on the show, like some shows, like the first season goes on for like f- like fifty episodes. Or exactly. Something. Yeah, but not anymore. But I, 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 we weren't sure if we'd get past the pilot stage, right? Right. And it did. It did. Because the first show, which is you and I, <laughs> that's wasn't right. it? Uh, the first show was just who's on our. F- uh, Mary Monsif was on our first show, was and she? Carl Oak. Was and Carl Oak, right? Carl Oak, no, right. they were great, but I mean, there was no one in the audience. No, there was no, no one in the audience. And now we've got more people coming. Like, yeah, which it's is been, nice. It's been good. Yeah, yeah. 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 So here, here we so are. So episode ten. Yeah, ten. Uh, this is actually a, it's a special one for me because uh, my buddy Tyler Calver is back in town from uh, from Kitchener Waterloo. Tyler was a uh, was a staple in Peterborough in terms of uh, Peterborough sports, and then he moved and went over to uh, the Waterloo area. So now CTV. He's, he's with CTV. Is wow. with the big show. That is big. Like to me, it's. CTV, CBC, Global, like you made the big leagues of Canada, right? Yeah, absolutely. So he's off doing that, and uh, we're going to hear all about that. And then, of course, we have uh, the May Hemingways on the show. May Hemingways, yeah. But uh, for anyone who's watching right now, you've probably noticed that there's uh, there's like some strange character behind you right now doing something. And he, yes. Yeah, he, he doesn't work here. His name is Jason Wilkins. <laughs> yeah. He might work here soon if this goes well. So Jason uh, Wilkins, I've seen him on ptblcanada.com. Yeah, he started a illustrative series for us on a raccoon named Ooh. Peter. <laughs> Peter Raccoon. Yeah, and it's going to be, we're not sure where it's going. Um, Jason's just going to sort of go free flow with it, with illustrations. But again, it's just another creative approach to content and sharing content. And it's going to tell the story through the lens of Peter the Raccoon in the community. So. Oh, I think we're like popping in and out of our uh, of our amplifier here. Uh-oh. Uh, is, that, is that an amplifier popping in and out there? Yeah. Uh-oh, Tyler, okay. can you do something about this? Actually, yeah. Do you, do you want to go turn the volume down just a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay, now we're good. Yeah, so Jason, uh, again, met him through Twitter. Lost her again. Yeah. All right. Now I think we're good. It's probably too loud. Okay, we're perfect. good. Perfect. Met Jason Wilkins through Twitter, and um, we ended up uh, starting to do these things together. And, and how I first heard of Jason was uh, he's a graphic facilitator. So uh, what that means is he was at a Peterborough economic development function where creative entrepreneurs um, were getting together to... Is it still doing that? Yeah. It's still doing yeah. that. It's all right. Yeah. yeah. So he uh, ended up drawing basically the creative economy in Peterborough and entrepreneurs. So I love your faces. Yeah. But yeah so anyway, we're trying this uh, approach today, live illustrating. And uh, we'll see how it goes. And we'll see what you look like illustrated because you look really good in real life. Yeah, but I know, think you could look better. Um, I, I'm actually, I'm, I'm wondering, I, have you done a caricature of me before? Well, was it a werewolf? Yes, yeah. He is incredible. Oh, I've been characterized. Oh, okay. He, he did the monster piece. This guy is absolutely incredible. So when did that happen? Um, that would have been uh, when we first started the Checks Daily, so it would have been uh, just over a year ago. So he randomly tweeted out a werewolf picture of you? Yeah, I, I think it got hooked up through Michelle Ferrer That's or, really cool. or, or Teresa Kashuba. No, they're, they're, yeah. they're incredible, incredible picture. I ha- it's, uh, and I'm not even lying. Yeah, it's he, on my fridge right now, and it has been since I got it. He, He's unbelievably talented. Uh, PCVS arts program he went to, uh, went to Sheridan College, lived in Toronto. He's another example of someone who's come back to Peterborough. Um, yep. He's just working freelance, working from home, like I do. It's a beautiful thing. All you Peterboroughites always end up back at home, eh? Th- they do. You know what? We go for 20 years. Another guy here, Jeff O'Connor, today in the audience, he left. Mike O'Connor, they left, uh, went away for 10 years, did their thing, and then they come back. And these are people who care about the community, yeah. but they're also realizing that the economy is such now that you can... You can create companies and work remotely, right? That's you don't have thing. to be it's in Toronto and, or It's New up York. and coming, right? Yeah. Peterborough still? It is. It, it is. Or is it here? Uh, I don't think it's here, but I think there's a lot of great stuff happening right now with this whole creative economy, and there's a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and uh, philanthropists, and it, it's just a matter of uh, more synergistic stuff and collaborating and getting together and brainstorming. It's starting to happen more between Peterborough Chamber, Peterborough Economic Development and all that, and... Yeah, it's got a lot of potential. I do tell people, like, it's glass half full here to me, not glass half empty. And, and uh, it, it's so good that we're able to have such amazing productions of musicals, apparently, in town. So you, you, yeah. you, you made it out to go see Rent. I, I was not able to go see it on opening night. I did. I did. I took my daughter, Chloe, and uh, we were blown away. It was packed audience um, at Showplace, and it was Art for Awareness that did it. And, of yeah. course, we had the cast on in the last episode. And 
you never know what to expect. And um, it was local theater, but I was saying to you earlier, it could have been anywhere in Toronto, New York production. It, it blew me away. And I said uh, to Jeff Benros, the creative director, I said, you got to take this on the road because it's, it's ending in eight days. And he's like, well, that's it. We're shutting it down. We all have day jobs. But yeah. it's, it was unbelievable, like 10 out of 10. And I'm sorry I um, didn't get to go to your improv. Oh, whatever. Oh, we'll talk about Yeah, it. we'll but talk about that I next. Wanna, I wanted to ask you about um, uh, how old is Chloe again? Grade nine? Uh, Chloe's uh, grade seven. Oh, grade seven. How did you find it, the subject matter? Because it's a little sketchy, right? Yeah, I forgot that part. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, we've talked about it in, the, in other episodes. Kids are so media savvy now on social media that for them, it's nothing. It's, it's yeah. Well, you let her We're, watch American Pie with you. So I did. And, <laughs> and someone does have relations with a pie in that. Movie. Yeah. I, <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I jumped in front of the TV at that point. You jumped but, in? <laughs> uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, no, I think kids, nothing shocked her. I think they're acclimatized now to all that stuff and i think that's a good thing overall the, uh, like well, I, so she yeah it got a little bit whatever uh but it was real like it was raw authentic and that's, I a, think, that's a good I, thing i think that's totally cool they I did not sanitize it for a peterborough audience i wouldn't yeah. i wouldn't care i think that's i think that's cool i remember my parents uh the first horror movie i saw was evil dead i was like six years old or something so i've been desensitized at a, at a very very uh early age i, I, I can say. tell yeah yeah. Uh, so so now I want to hear, and I feel bad I didn't uh, go to your improv because... Um, well, it's not my improv. Well, it's going to be. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but you debuted with the City It's on Friday. You were the special guest. And um, by all accounts, it went really well. So what's it like going up in front of... Again, I've asked you, uh, going in front of TV, you're just looking into a camera, but going in front of like two or 300 people and not knowing what the subject material is going to be, what's that like? You know what? I think... I think I pref- I would prefer to not know what the subject material would be as opposed to having to memorize lines and uh, and be afraid of screwing up because I'm very scatterbrained so I can I can handle like kind of moving on my feet whereas right. um, uh, memorizing and, and that kind of shit I'm I'm pretty bad at it so right. um, and being up on, on the stage it was it was a little nerve wracking at first I've never done anything like that. I just looked over everyone and kind of focused just underneath the lights. That's a trick, right? And uh, and we couldn't really make anyone out in the audience anyway. So, yeah. But it was just a matter of like like I'm here. I showed up. Yeah. And like, what am I going to do? Am I so gonna... what was your favorite sketch that you did? You were involved in three or four. So yeah. Was, was there a highlight? I, I think I was in seven sketches. Wow. And um, the 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 one I, I liked the most was uh, a musical one. It was called The Bartender. So right. um, Kate, who's one of the city, it's, is uh, pretending to be a bartender at a bar, and I'm supposed to walk in. And um, I guess Ray Henderson decided that I was disappointed about something. Then he turns to the crowd, and he's like, well, what are you disappointed? What's Mike disappointed about? And they get to decide. And obviously, they chose the weather right. immediately, like right thing. Like, oh, the weather. So that was kind of a, they threw me a bone there. Because yeah. I'm like, okay, I know this. So you ordered a blizzard. So, um, well... There might have been some profane language used on, on stage, which yes. I, was actually quite thrilling and exciting for you, it's for, liberating, for me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, no, so we did that. I had to, to improvise a song for about two minutes, and then Kate would reply, and then I would finish the so song. So it was a duet? Yeah, it was a duet. Uh, like a love song? Um, no, it was about me um, being um, terrible at forecasting weather and, oh. and screwing up the forecast. <laughs> so it was accurate And how then. everyone hates me about it. Yeah, it was, yeah. It, it was an accurate portrayal of my, of my general Very life. Very cool. So uh, we did that, and uh, it was it was just a lot of fun. It was it was it was um, it reminded me of the endorphin rush that I had the first time I did weather, right? Because you, you're up there and you don't like, you know, the camera's on or the people are there. You, yeah. You like, what are you gonna do? You're gonna run away? No. Yeah. Or you're gonna go half-ass it? Yeah. Probably not. So you just throw to, yourself into it. And it feels great. I have to tell you, it's one of the hardest things I've ever tried. I took a class with the legendary um, uh, comic actor Paul Sullivan once, right. uh, the late Paul Sullivan. Uh, and he had an art. They have an arts academy in Peterborough. Him and his partner Linda Cash at Papa's on King, I think it's called. Yep. Hardest thing I've ever done. I took it with some of the chorus crew: Pete Dalday, Catherine Hanahan, Danny Stover. And it's just, um, it's unbelievable. It's not like sitting in a bar and like you know going back and forth or trash talking each other and having a beer in you. It's 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 just going all over the place. You yeah. don't know what's coming at you next. Who's tapping on your shoulder to check you out or in? And uh, honestly, it was a bucket list moment for me trying that, but um, it's not its not my thing. It's, uh, I think i think you're good at that. I think uh, some people are just more are naturals at it. Maybe. Yeah. It was it was fun. I owe it all to, to my son because I, I make up a lot of music for him on the spot. Yeah. He's kind of singing like weird songs. So, and, uh, and, Tommy and, uh, was there? No, no, no. I just... Uh, yeah. I, oh, I, you I have to improvise with him all the time. Yeah. All the time. Did so, Jen go? Your wife? Jen went. We, we found a babysitter for the night. Nice. Which was amazing. It's our first time with a babysitter. Yeah. A friend of ours came in and, uh, and took care of Tommy for the evening. And then, uh, and then I stayed out a little late. 
on yes. the Friday night uh, with the with the with the city. It's uh, nice. I heard the rent cast came back too. They came back yeah. after, and uh, yeah. So you did a little musical back there. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was yeah. a bit of a celebration. It yeah. was it was a really good night. Very cool. So, so uh, you've had the bucket list moments of the Globetrotters, and now the city. It. So what's next Friday night for you? I, uh, next Friday night is nothing. I'm actually I'm blacking out my my schedule okay. for the next little while. And I'm because I was going to see if you want to play ping pong at my house. Well, if actually, if you want to play ping pong, <laughs> I, I work till eleven thirty, so I start after then. Okay, you, uh, yeah, no, I'm in bed by eleven thirty, but, but um, I, I do love a good game of ping pong. Yeah, 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 you do, and you need practice. But I can, I can, I can uh, definitely you give know you the what? training. If Johnny was the weak link that time. You guys beat us. Johnny and yeah. my Johnny is the weak link too. Right, you're so, Johnny Trash and my John Lacey. Yeah, yeah. So yeah next exactly. time, next time, just you wait. Yeah, you uh, wait. Okay. Yeah. So today, yeah, we're gonna have Tyler Culver, M.A. Hemingways, and we're gonna keep this live illustrating going and see what you look like. You might look like a werewolf, werewolf again yeah, but after I, two beers. I hope so. And you yeah. know, uh, with, with the May Hemingways as well, it was um, uh, over the last couple of weeks so, since they said that they were gonna come on the podcast. I've yeah. been checking out more of their music on YouTube, and uh, you guys do a really good cover and uh, version of Atlantic City. Um, I don't know if they're big. Uh, Springsteen is uh, the, the guy who wrote it. But one of my favorite covers for that is um, a guy named Hank Williams III does a version of Atlantic City on, I think, his second album. Incredible stuff. But they, they did a good one, too. And he plays the accordion. And I think I saw a box that may have an accordion in it or not. So I'm is not that sure. what they're going to play today? I hope so. Yeah. because You're going to request it. Well, they've got a little Cajun influence in their music yeah. as well. So uh, it would be very cool to hear something like awesome, that. Awesome, man. A little yeah. Louisiana-style music. And I have to mention our next episode, Linda Cash is coming on. Speaking, we were talking about improv earlier. Yeah. So oh, I hope she messes with me on that because she's Oh, I'm amazing. sure she will. Yeah. Uh, but but no references to Philadelphia cream cheese commercials because she's probably heard that a million times. Right? Oh come no, on! No, you got You're gonna cover that. I'm gonna yeah, put I like thirty. Yeah, I know. Cans <laughs> of cream cheese. Just one giant Costco cream. cheese. You're gonna cheese go overboard. I know it, and I, gonna, I love you for that, Mike. Just. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hope <laughs> this is gonna be a terrible interview. And uh, actually, I just wanna I wanna ask her about Seinfeld. I'm sure everyone wants to ask Linda about Seinfeld, but I've never had that opportunity because I, I used to work with her. And uh, I felt like, ah, she doesn't want to talk about Seinfeld. Right, right. But I want to talk about Seinfeld. Oh, you now, will. Because uh, go he's got this great new show. Well, it's not new. Dan mm-hmm. O'Toole corrected me last, uh, the, the, the last time we had this. was, uh, It's not new, but it's called uh, it's comedians, comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. Yeah. And uh, it's like in five seasons, but there's only like six or seven episodes Yeah, a it's season. fine under the radar. But it's awesome. It is awesome. I've it, seen a few. It's, it's a YouTube series, right? It's, a, it's on it's Crackle. Not- What's that? Crackle is um, this. Uh, it, it's an app that you can get on your phone. Okay. Like I have it on mine. It's completely free. You just have to watch a couple ads before they show the shows. Cool. There's movies, TV shows, everything. You should check it out. And now I'm doing advertising for Crackle. It's wow. not that great. It's not as good as our is podcast. Is Larry David involved with that? Uh, he was on the first episode of that. Okay, but, so he's not involved with no, the no, creative no. side of it. No. Okay. Yeah. It's all Jerry, I think. Very cool, man. But yeah, so yeah. Um, that does it for the uh, first 12 uh, minutes of, uh, of the podcast. I think it's time to bring on uh, Mr. Tyler Mr. Calver. Tyler Culver. All right. All right, let's do it. All right, peace. Thanks, okay. Neil. PTBO Canada Live is brought to you by Riley's. Riley's is the host of this podcast. You can meet us here every single Sunday between 3 and 4 p.m. Come hang out, have a pint, have some of their nachos. Their nachos are some of the best in town. And just hang out and watch the podcast. And uh, you know what? If you get sick and tired of watching the podcast, you can always head next door to Petrina's. They own that too. And that is a humongous billiard. They have big screens all over the place. You can watch the game. If there is football playing on a Sunday, then you're going to be getting half price wings and half price nachos. And and then you know what? Uh, I also have to remind you, upstairs is a little place called The Junction. They also hold functions at The Junction. It's a great dance hall. Lots of great stuff happening in this place. It's an entertainment complex. But don't forget, we shoot the podcast here three and four every single Sunday afternoon. Come by and hang out. Let's watch the podcast. Uh, losing weight. Yeah, you are losing weight. Peterborough made you fat, I think. <laughs> it's making me fat. All right. Let's, are we uh, on or what? Um, How, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. All Is right. That- well, I'm going to start it now. That's how, when I look at it later, <laughs> <laughs> I can sing it up. That's like your, that's like your uh, what's it's, it called? Yeah, from that's, the, that's my, my take thing. There you go. All right, uh, welcome back to uh, episode 10 of uh, PTBO Live, uh, PTBO Canada Live, I think is the name of the podcast. Uh, Tyler Calver joining me now. 10 episodes. I don't, I think you'd left before we even did the first one, right? That's right, I did. Do you remember me telling you about this? Yes, you were you were starting this just probably like a week after I left. Right, and uh, actually, I, I don't even. It, it was the day you quit at Chex Television was the day I got approval to to go ahead and do this podcast. 
So I don't know if it had anything to do with you, but I, I'll thank you anyway. <laughs> I'll take the credit. Anyways, what are you what are you doing back here in Peterborough? Moving today. Right. Actually, well, you know exactly nah. why you're helping me move. <laughs> I know. No That's beers good. or anything. I brought the coffees. Exactly. What I kind of move that. is that? I know. Yeah. <laughs> so a little, I think I think nine in the morning though, isn't that a little too early for beers? Dude, you're up at seven o'clock this oh, morning I to know. Move your house. What's Brutal. wrong with you? I, went to, I fell asleep at 8.30 last night. Four-hour drive in that snowstorm to come to do this podcast. That's the only reason why I'm here. I'm actually not moving. I The moving was like the second part of this. The main part was to be on the podcast. Right. Well, thank you. So I drove four hours in a blizzard conditions from Kitchener to Peterborough to be here today to be on this podcast. You know what? You... Uh you you truly are a good friend. I love you for that, Tyler. Now, well, I have to be a part of this ten. This is ten episodes. This is you know, this, this is a big decade. one. This is it's like a decade in podcasting. Exactly. For sure. <laughs> now, um, uh, for every, for every, for everyone who's forgotten, because as soon as you leave Peterborough Media, I think it takes about two months before everyone forgets who yeah, you are. Yeah, nobody even knows who I am. Yeah, no one knows. That's why all. I'm wearing this uh, this, <laughs> this hat, just so people remember. Like, the, hey, wait a second. That was your parting gift for six hard years at checks. They gave you a toque that was actually probably Donnie's before. <laughs> yeah, this is. <laughs> It. Six years and I got a two. That was it. I don't think. I, well, no one knows who Donnie is, but um, describe Donnie. Uh, I don't know if I should. I might get in trouble. <laughs> Has anyone been sued on a podcast no, before? No, no, no. I don't. This think This might so. be the first. Just try not to be too slanderous. Well, Donnie is. Uh, he's a shorter gentleman, and I'm a, not a very big gentleman. Right. I mean, he's kind of like if he, he if you remember like uh, Frodo from you yeah. know, Lord of the Rings, he's, just a little pudgier. Yeah, yeah. So maybe he's like Samwise. He's like Samwise Gamgee. I'll, I'll say that that Donnie, the he's a so he's a floor director. He comes in and does the cameras only on Fridays, and then he's in master right. control for the weekend. I had my wife come in and she was helping me um, do this uh, whiteboard in my office, and it was on a Sunday. And Donnie comes walking out of master control, about three and a half feet tall, walks over. <laughs> And he looks at Jen and he's like, hi, uh, yeah, they just call me the troll here at Chex <laughs> Television. Jen's like, what the hell was that? But uh, Donnie is uh, is still probably one of my favorite people yeah, at Yeah, he's a great guy. I gave him my, my Chex jacket when I left. And right. He, he thought it was the greatest thing ever. Yeah, well, Donnie would. Yeah. Donnie's a great guy. And he, uh, he, lives and he deserves in, it. And he lives in Carrie Ferguson's apartment. He does. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be an interesting relationship. That's going to be an interesting move out day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get out the Javex. <laughs> don't, don't take a blue light in that place. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's enough about Donnie. Um, so, so Tyler, you did the sports here. Uh, so now you're in, in Kitchener, Waterloo, and uh, you're working for CTV. Yes. So are you a big shot now? Not yet. Although I did get, for the first time since I started, I got called, hey, it's the weather guy. And I was saying six years in in Peterborough being the sports guy, I got called the weather guy. Every, every I go to like... Go to Boston Pizza and remember, hey, it's the weather guy. I'm like, no, I do sports. They nope. kept getting me confused with you or <laughs> Jay Scotland. I don't understand. I don't know if they thought I was you or anyway. First time ever I got called the weather guy. So I'm like, yeah, that actually makes sense. So you're doing you're doing weather now. Yeah, doing weather, doing news, uh, filling sports, so like everything. So tell me, like, uh, as as uh, I've never done sports except for I've done like some sports radio when I, early in my career back in Calgary. Um, what's your first impressions with weather? How do you like it? Weather, I love weather. Weather is actually, because now having a chance to do sports, do, I'm doing news reporting. Weather is actually the hardest of the, of the three. Like, by far, it's the hardest. It's, I have the, a great appreciation for it. It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's changing, you know what I mean? People get pissed off when you, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? If you don't get it right, you know what I mean? So you have to be, you know, you have to be right on it. And as you know that, people think that you control it, like, People are asking you all the time, oh, how long is it going to snow for? And really, and it's there's a, there's so much science behind it, right? So it's, I have a great appreciation for it. Yeah, there's so many variables and, uh, and, and so many ways you can screw up yes. in weather. And yeah. uh, you really have to be able to develop tough skin quickly yeah. because yeah, there's lots of hate emails. Do you remember that note that I got? Do you remember that when I got a handwritten note with no return address on it? And uh, I'm like, what's this? I open it up and it's like, hey, weather guy. Stick to eating chicken wings. <laughs> Weather yes, isn't your thing. I do remember that. Yeah, like handwritten, no yeah. return address. I'm like, that, that is was borderline. Like you, as like you get, like <laughs> stalking. You know what I mean? Like threatening. We, we've had stalkers through the station we before. Have. You, uh, you haven't been stalked yet, have no, you? No, but uh, one of our reporters, uh, anchors, yeah, was stalked. Yeah. And that's that's scary stuff. That's why our whole building is locked down like Fort Knox now. Th this guy was like, he thought he was like some sort of prince or something, and they were. <laughs> it was really a bizarre story. Those were. Remember? Did you remember reading some of those 
those letters. I, I never that got. He it sent? was right when I started, oh, so I didn't get to read they them. They were awesome. I wish we had them. <laughs> we could read them. <laughs> Look, that guy went to jail. <laughs> yeah, he did. He went to, I think he's out now too. <laughs> yeah, he's scary. He can stalk me if he's a he good writer. He came into the station. Eh? They had like surveillance video of him, like trying They're going to going in using the washroom, yeah. coming back out. That's yeah, anybody could just come in and check TV and use the washroom in the past. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's ridiculous. So, um, with, uh, with being down in Kitchener and uh, in Waterloo now, what are the what are the big differences in terms of uh, lifestyle changes that you're seeing between there and Peterborough? You know, the lifestyle is not that different, but there's like so much so many more people there. Mm-hmm. Like the traffic is obviously it's different. Like the the other day, there's like 15 car pileups on the expressway and stuff like that. <laughs> like it's it's almost it's like it's like Toronto, just a little bit smaller. So there is like a lot heavier traffic. I mentioned like. Um, you, you, I'm covering a lot more stories, like in murders, big fires, and uh, and this is this is actually accident, that's one of crashes. my most exciting things about what, about your move because um, what a lot of people probably don't know in Peterborough, while you were the sports guy forever, the last thing you were ever talking about in the newsroom was sports. It was always politics. It was always uh, stuff that was going on in the neighborhood in the news, and uh, and and you always had one of the loudest voices. You know how quiet <laughs> it is at checks now because they moved all of our editors to. Uh, to the, like our editing software to everyone's computer, personal computer. So now you walk into the newsroom, everyone has headphones on, everyone's editing. It's like quiet. So the, people actually get work done now. People get work done. They're not they're not screwing the dog like we used to <laughs> all the time. So I'm like just I, don't know, I just spend most of the time in the washroom drinking coffee and on my phone because I mean, what else am I gonna do? Exactly. I gotta, right. I just because well, coffee- the weather's so easy, right? It only takes you two minutes. To oh, get I just it, yeah. I just pipe in yeah. Canada right yeah, in. Yeah. What do you do the rest of your day? <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you heard that? Oh, all the time. <laughs> All the time. So, like, being able to go out and cover things like politics now, like, yeah. this is exciting for you. And another thing is that you're doing live hits all the time. Yeah, so we do, like, like every day you're out live. Even in this minus 40 weather, we're, mm. like, out doing our live hits and, like, where it's minus 40. And it's pretty cool. It's, it's really it's really neat. Like I said, covering, like, mur- like, having the lead story on, like, a murder or a huge fire and, like, people getting rescued from buildings and stuff like that. So I'm doing those stories now. So it's a lot of fun. It's really challenging. But... It's kind of like opened up my eyes and kind of almost like rejuvenated my like love for broadcasting. Yeah. And then like doing weekend weather and a lot of filling for sports and stuff. So still getting that that sports aspect. But your your schedule is like ridiculous now. Yeah. You're, so you're... I'll work like ten in a row, like ten Ugh. days in a row, and then I'll get four off. Well, doesn't CTV understand that there is no news on weekends? No, they don't. They they <laughs> they keep going, man. Like there's no stop. It's like it's a, it's like a new. I would say like. Picture it like a box factory. You're always producing something. So like every day, even on the weekends, like they they're producing news, like an hour long newscast at six on the weekends. You know, half an hour at, at eleven. It's a and then we have a uh, noon show during the week. So there's a lot a lot of news going on there. Now, um, you were saying earlier today because I, I mean now you're you're off. You're doing something completely different. But you were saying uh, and, and this struck me. I, I actually I went home and told my wife this. I'm like I'm like Jen Tyler said that he's interested in trying stand up comedy. I, yeah. <laughs> I think that is an awesome idea because uh, I always tell my friends, um, you're just like one of my friends I have back home. His name's Adam. And uh, you both of you guys remind me of Larry Davis. You're so <laughs> neurotic. And just the, the the way you just like find something and obsess over every detail of it <laughs> and then go and talk about it at length. I think that you could probably do that with a few subjects on stage. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I mean, I could probably I've got some interesting stories. I don't know how well that would translate with CTV if I was to tell them some of the crazy antics are they not are they not are they not podcast appropriate i I don't think so no (laughs) no like the time i was in a high-speed chase i don't think that that they'd want to know that oh i have a great um i have a great high-speed chase story that happened you know what i'm not even gonna say it i'm not even gonna say (laughs) i don't think it's safe for podcasts (laughs) although like just for all your for your bosses still at checks tv i'm rocking the checks tv uh, hat today why well, I hate it. Megan's out, actually. I'm back. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah oh, just want to. Fantastic. She was doing a terrible job. <laughs> well, look, at once I leave, the Peets, they're terrible. They're barely making the playoffs. The Lakers, their whole organization's going through kerfuffle. So look what happens when I leave. Dude, so you uh, you spent so much time down at that rink, um, or barn, as they call it in, yep. uh, in hockey. Um, dude, do you miss it at all, going down to the Men's yeah, Center? Yeah, I miss the people. They're, they're, they're awesome. Yeah. Like, all, all the uh, guys that work at the Memorial Center and all the ushers and stuff like that, they're just, they were just always such great people, and you could... I mean, it's hard to work because you always, they always want to talk to you and exchange stories. I think that's probably one of the biggest things, the difference from Kitchener, is that you don't have those relationships. You know what I mean? Like, even though you're, you're on TV and it's like there's like a million people in that area 
you, you don't get there's not there's not that recognition in, in that where people will come up to you and talk to you and stuff like that like I mean I couldn't go to Home Depot here or to anywhere without people wanting to talk to you about sports right and still now probably for like the next five or ten years it'll be the same thing every time you come back here yeah that's and that's what the, makes Peterborough so great right is that yeah they, they feel like they that they know you so well and that you're part of them right and you can make such a bigger difference when it comes to uh, to towns like this I find um, like there's just way more exposure it's kind of that that big fish small pond thing yeah so now you're over and you're big fish in big pond right yeah so one of the things we don't like i don't do as much like community stuff that i did here really it's, just, it's not i guess it, i mind you you're so I'm, I'm also a lot maybe more busy i'm more busy than than i was but you're working 10 days yeah. straight and so you're you don't even wild. have a lot of time like i don't if you're working 10 in a row, you don't have a chance to have a weekend to do some community stuff. So you'll, you'll end up doing something. I'm yeah. sure because it's uh that, that was, that was the one thing you taught me when I first came to checks was, um, you know what, this is a great community. Look after them and they'll look after you. And it's exactly how my career has been for the last three and three plus years. Absolutely. It's been awesome here. And, uh, I know a lot of people miss you. I miss you on checks TV. I get it all the time. But um, if you could, if you could come, I'm paying him to say that. By the way, I just no, no, no. It's true. It's true. (laughs) Oh, we're back. There we go. Okay, very nice. Uh, Sorry, the amp just kicked back in. It's in and out. I blame it on this patch cord. It's um, it's a. I blame it on Neil Morton. You do blame it on Neil. You know, a lot of people like to blame shit on Neil. <laughs> oh, fair he's, enough. He's, he's kind of a jerk. Yeah, he is a bit. Well, <laughs> I'm yeah, just kidding. Probably one of the nicest guys <laughs> I've met around here. But um, all right. So what is the problem with the Pete's? Uh, I don't even know where to you, start. You don't work here anymore. You don't. Yeah. You know what? I'll, I, said, I don't work here anymore. You know, it all goes back to scouting. They're not scouting the right talent. Is that it? The, the, it all goes back. They're not scouting the right talent. When you look at all these draft picks that get picked after the Pete's players and and they're just way better, you know, like, you know, <sighs> everyone can say that it's small market, but when, like, you look at the Erie Otters, who are now a great, great team, they're, you know, fighting for first place. Yeah. They're they're in the States. Like, nobody even cares about 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 hockey there, right? No one cares about junior hockey in Erie. Like, And so why are they doing so well? Exactly, right? Because proper scouting? Exactly. But what, what about, like, I always keep hearing about the board here, uh, the Pete's board. See, I don't, I don't know if it, you say uh, if it's the board itself. Like, I think if it was private ownership, then it would be way better because that owner would have to be responsible financially for the team, right? Right. So if the team is doing terrible, they're not getting the the crowds. Then he'd have to change things up and, and change coaches and change his scouting staff because he's not making things financially. Whereas here, the board isn't financially responsible for the hockey club, so. If, if they're not drawing people at the gate, what do they care, right? Right. It doesn't really affect them financially. And I think oh. that if it was a private owner and it was affecting him financially, they would be in a hurry to make changes. Because we had uh, we had Dalladay on the show. We're talking about, you know, like potential moves for the Memorial Center to have like a new thing. Wouldn't it be awesome to have it downtown? I think it would be cool. You know, that's one thing I did notice that's different in, in Kitchener-Waterloo in that area. All of the small communities surrounding Kitchener-Waterloo, like Air and Elmira, they all have really great community centers, really nice rinks with attached pools and stuff like that. And we're talking about communities of like 10 to 20,000 people. Right. We're not talking about like a large, like 100,000 people. And they have great community centers. And that's, I mean, I'm wondering how can they do that and how can Peterborough can't with the population here and like having like like a good community center out in like Lakefield or in yeah. uh, in Lindsay and like right. all these pockets and and come well I don't know I mean I, I don't know if they're getting more financial from the government like I don't help from the government I don't know but it's really surprising like like Elmira has an amazing rink like they have the, the so their team would be like it's like the Elmira Sugar Kings is like a junior junior B team which would be like junior A here so like the Lindsay okay. Muskies yeah and and they have they play in this really great rink, so like I go there to shoot highlights, and I'm like, wow, this is a cool rink, like, like it's really nice. Hold up, but where do, where do the Kitchener Rangers play? So they play at the Kitchener Auditorium. And where's that in that's, Kitchener? That's in Kitchener, and it's a, it's a really is nice, it in the downtown? Yeah, it's just on it's just off the expressway a little bit in like the heart of Kitchener, and it's a really nice arena too. And I actually, see, I don't, the Kitchener Rangers they took out the their board. They're the only other team in the OHL that has a board, their board, they make, they I mean, they sell out every game. They have no problem financially, but they actually took out a, uh, like a $10 million loan from the bank to actually redo their entire arena. And really? This, yeah, and the city, part and parcel, the Rangers in the city, they work so well together. 
And I would probably say that's the other problem with the Peterborough Beats and the city of Peterborough is that they don't work well together. Like there's some animosity between the two and the Peets and the city don't get together. They don't collaborate. And actually the city has things in place that actually harm the Peets and the Peets, there's just not a good relationship there. Right. So in Kitchener, they support the team. Like the city's like, yeah, whatever you guys want to do, like you guys want to do renovations to the rink, perfect. Because it's the well, the, they're selling out all the time. They're exactly, making money for the city exactly. where, they, where the Pete's aren't right, right. now. I, I suppose. Right. I don't know. So they, they actually all these like it was like ten million dollars in renovations to the auditorium. It wasn't the city doing it. It was the team that did it. Yeah. And, but they had the complete backing of the city to do it, and it looks great, and it's an amazing facility now. So uh, you say the Pete's aren't drafting well. Another team that is like that, and I, we'll talk sports for a second, but um, the Toronto Maple Leafs. So I, I actually stopped watching hockey about three years ago. Um, I, I haven't watched a full NHL game in over three years, and uh, actually I, I, I've kind of been liking it. I've, I've found time to do other. I took a painting. You know, like that's a three hours, like three yeah. times a week. That's that's nine hours a week. That's almost that's a lo- that's a whole work day. Well, considering how bad the Leafs have been, right? And I, I can't I can't emotionally invest myself in it anymore. And I find sports to be strange at times because you're invo- in like you're emotionally investing yourself in guys who are playing a game, right? And it's kind of like inconsequential as to whether or not it affects your life if they win. And everyone's right. like, we won. You didn't do anything. <laughs> exactly. But I, I, but I understand. But at the same time, people are saying now that the Leafs are so terrible, they have to tank, tank the season. What are your thoughts on, like, a hockey team just, like, tanking, like, losing purposefully to get good draft picks? Well, I don't know. I think Buffalo is already there. Like, Buffalo and Edmonton have both already done that. So, right. like, they're going to get Connor McDavid regardless. Mind you, though, it's a, it's a draft. Like, the Leafs still have a, a chance, right? So. You know, we'll find out. People will say if the Leafs get that over one first overall pick, that it'll be it's stacked or that it's there's this conspiracy and all this stuff. Right. But um, no, I, I don't think I think it's it'd be silly to, to, for a team to purposely tank because you, at the end of the day, right? You you winning is contagious, right? Why are the Chicago Blackhawks so good? They've won for the last like five years. Like they're the best team, like record wise and same with the LA Kings right they they just keep winning right well that winning is contagious so all those players have a winning attitude a winning mentality they know what it takes to win so now you have the Leafs who've been terrible the last few years all those players that are remaining on that team like the Kadri's and the Lupals they don't know what it takes to win right Right. so you can get the first overall pick and Connor McDavid can go in there but he's going into like a a bad situation because he's going in with a guy, a bunch of guys that have done nothing but lose the last five years, right? I think they're going to just blow up the entire team, just get rid of everyone, and then start. Oh, yeah. they got to rebuild completely, yeah. but actually do it. Yeah, because I mean, there's a few players that you want to keep, but most of them like get rid get of rid Castle. Of I, I said I would watch the Leafs again if they got rid of Randy Carlisle. Uh, Dion Phaneuf and Phil Kessel. If they got rid of all those three, then I'm good. Even though Phil Kessel's an incredible point producer, he's a great player. I don't like him. I don't well, get he's him. not a leader, right? No. And and if you're that good, you should be a leader, in my opinion. So uh, I won't watch that anymore. But um, so I, I was I was telling you today when I was helping you move. I want I want your Peterborough rap report. So you're done. You're, you're out of the city. Are you ready to burn all your bridges? And just... yeah, so I can start going around and being like, <laughs> yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't like you. I don't like you. You're cool. Yeah, I'm you know? out of here. No, but um, you, I, you've only been gone for a few months. You can't really be missing Peterborough so much because you're you're probably wrapped up in too much experience out there. Yeah, I've been. I also been coming back quite a bit just to like finish things up and with the house and closing things down. So I, it's like I haven't really left because I've been working so much at, at CTV and then coming back on my days off on my weekends and then doing stuff here and coming back. So it, it'll probably really hit home like after this weekend because like, you know, once the, the house closes and someone else moves in and we move out and it's uh, it's going to be pretty uh, pretty emotional probably. Well, I, I'd venture to say that out of, um, out of anyone at checks, aside from Graham Hart probably, um, you, you've probably invested more of your, your personal time into helping this community than anyone else. Yeah. That's one thing I would spend like like 14 hours like on a project like some video at checks and I would be there like till like three in the morning editing it. And now it's just Graham yeah. Hart. He's there by himself still <laughs> doing that. And see, that's one thing. Like now at my job, like I put in my my time and I'm I'm gone. So there's there's not that, that personal attachment to to every to every story that I had. Yeah. At checks, right? And then Tyler uh, Graham Hart, I think, is missing you too. I haven't heard. You know, remember when he used to scream. Every Tyler! Second. Tyler! <laughs> Tyler! He'd be on the desk and, like, reading through his taxes. He'd be doing his taxes on the desk. Yeah, and then, then, like, the, the 11 o'clock comes up. And it was, 
Hello, and <laughs> welcome to the news, Tyler. <laughs> but uh, no, it's 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 been uh, it's been quiet around checks. Uh, do you ever plan on uh, coming back? <laughs> uh, well, if uh, I don't know, I mean, we'll see what happens. No, you're not no, coming no, back. Probably not. You're, you're, you're definitely not coming back. But no. um, so, like, oh, what else do you want to cover when you're out there? You're doing sports and news. Is there anything else that you want to get into? Like, are you looking to like make like the jump to like Toronto or? You know what? Just right now, I'm just trying to get, you know, I guess you could call it acclimatized to like this new environment, and it's it's you know it's very stressful sometimes because you like you'll come in at like nine thirty to start your shift and get your story by 10 o'clock you out of the news meeting and you're like okay you gotta go live at noon and you're like okay i haven't made a single call i haven't shot a single interview or piece of video and i have to have like a the story ready for noon yeah so it, there's a there's a lot of stress that you're like gotta really oh, it sounds work terrible. your tail off to try to, to try to get something on for noon so it's i'm trying to get used to that like that new pace right yeah because i kind of had checks like i kind of was on my own pace right like i covered what i wanted to cover i covered the story if i, I don't want to do it today i'll do it tomorrow kind of thing where i'm like i've got to get that done today and it's got to be in at uh, this time and it's got to be this long so i'm trying to get my head around that and then once that happens we'll just see like um, yeah, because like, you know, I'm building a new house and, and kitchen or so. Yeah, congratulations! You got well. You're not building it physically. Well, I'm, well, I'm all, all you're doing is showing up yes. on the site once a week yeah. to be like, I don't like that. I don't like you that. Know, like the I builders see, probably. It sounds hate better you. when I say it though. I'm like, yeah. I'm building uh, a house. Uh, I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> no. So other people are building. So once, once that's finished, and just kind of maybe just kind of sell it settle down and just relax you, you just found a crack in the foundation <laughs> <laughs> let's not talk about that <laughs> no and it's it's not even built yet no so what do you what the hell are you gonna do now that's it you gotta just you gotta sell it and go get another one right i don't know I it's don't... gonna be it's gonna be trouble no uh, i don't need i don't need the stress and then I, if, if I'm, I'm gonna, i can't sleep as it is i dream about these things now yeah. That's what Larry David does, right? He's no. so particular about every little detail. Yeah, obsessive in particular that you yeah. can't sleep at night. You you're... know what's funny, though? Is what? that I just realized in my entire life, there's not one thing that I truly, like, you know, like, besides, like, my family and stuff, but, with the, like, that I'm 100%. You know how some people are, like, obsessed with, like, NASCAR or NHL or music? Like, yeah. there's not one thing that I really, like, care 100% about. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I care about, like, things like 80%, 70%, like, but I'm like, I get, like, you know... Yeah, that's how I am. Well, it's like a, it's like devout r religious people, right? Like that, like uh, you know, like you become like a priest or uh, or uh, you become a rabbi or whatever, and or an imam, and then you dedicate your entire life to to, to preaching the word or doing whatever. I'm like, that sounds like way too much work yes. and dedication. Like, I know. I get. I see. My I have ADD, so I get bored of things after a while. Well, like, you have more than uh, ADD. I don't know what's going on <laughs> in that head, but yeah, it, it, it does. Like, get, even right now, I'm like, what? Well, that over there <laughs> <laughs> I, keep, I, keep I keep looking over there I'm wondering what, what kind of picture he's doing I'm not even listening to you half the time that we're talking right now but uh, no that's it's so true like I have no idea like what I want to do moving forward you know yeah. like there's like a million things I, I'd love to try out uh, improv was one of them earlier this yeah. week that was a lot of See, fun you're, so, you're kind of similar to me because you you're, you kind of like get, go on to one thing and then you'll You'll switch and you'll oh, get yeah. bored of it, right? Am it I right? It happens all the time. Yeah. I, I wonder when I'm going to get bored of this. Probably, I don't know. I actually, I really enjoy <laughs> doing the podcast. This is this is kind of a new work thing for me. Yeah, because I remember you always telling me you said that you've never been at a job longer than three years. Right? And, and was it, checks is yes. the first job I lasted long. Actually, it was two years. Oh, two years. I'd never done a job in my life longer than two years. I've had so many jobs, most of them lasting like three or four months. And like a kitchen manufacturing plant. My first job was at McDonald's, and um, I got fired. And <laughs> I was an idiot when I was a kid. Just a just. What a did jerk. you do to get fired? Um, I think it was uh, it was missing work, but we had like um, I think the final straw. Although they, they didn't say it was the final straw, I had missed a couple of shifts, and people had to come and backfill for me, and they were kind of pissed off. And then. Um, we had this um, Big Mac gun fight in the in the back because I was like working the chicken fryers or whatever, yeah. and I took the Big Mac gun and uh, the girls who were working at the front, uh, working at the tills, they'd walk by me and I'd shoot like a big squirt of Big Mac sauce on their back and they wouldn't know, so they'd be talking to the customer and they'd be like, "Okay, let me get a drink." They turn around, there's Big Mac sauce all <laughs> over their back. Isn't Big Mac sauce just Thousand Islands dressing? No, there's something else in it because um, I did a taste of it once. I tasted it. I'm like, it's not quite there. So I think either they're adding more salt or um, or more relish or something to it. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's exactly the same. But I don't know the, I don't know the secret sauce, so I don't know the, yeah. the truth of it. But, yeah. So And then I missed a day, and they fired me. So what are you going to do? Hey, 
now you've been at checks now longer than two years first time ever it's crazy so like uh, like uh, people ask me are you going to be the next peter fiakowski uh, did you ever meet peter never uh once i think yeah oh but that was wait, he wasn't working when no you were no there. no so you went through two other weathermen, and yeah. one of them you're still very good friends with. Yeah, Scotland, Jay Scotland. Scotland, yeah. that's a character, eh? Oh yeah, yeah. He, he's a he's a kind of an interesting character. Like to talk about obsessive compulsive, he gets on things, <laughs> and yeah, he's got a bit of ADD too. I think that's why we all get along. Yeah, that similarity, right? I haven't seen Jay in a long time. Sometimes he would come up to Peterborough. I think I saw him a couple times. He wanted to come check out the new weather system because yeah. uh, we, we, we upgraded since he left. Actually, he left. Do you remember he left? And then, like, a couple months after he left, the entire system failed. Crashed, yeah. yeah. The whole thing crashed. I had to build it up from scratch. It was the worst time of my life. I've actually had a situation like that. Well, not where the computer crashed, but where I'm doing the weather, and I didn't click on something, and then I go out there with no boards. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. The what, worst. Did you, did you have to improv oh, like, I was all just, the Oh, I had, like, you know, to do your three minutes or whatever, and you've got a plan to do it with, like, eight boards or whatever. Yeah. And it came up, and I only had three and I was like, how am I going to... And it was like, one of them was like Almanac in the seven day. Yeah. Oh, well, you and can spend like, a lot of time on a seven day. Yeah, but three minutes? <laughs> I don't know. It's been done. And they were like, wow. He, the, 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 the director was like, wow, you spent a lot of time on that seven day. I'm like, yeah, it's because I had no boards. Yeah. Oh, it was the worst. And then um, this actually just happened last week because we, we have the CBC affiliation and something was wrong with one of our systems. We couldn't get any of our CBC stories piped in. They're all coming in late. And uh, I have like a tease thing that I do right off the top of the show, and it's like an, a minute long. They're like, Mike, can you can you stretch that to two minutes? And it's right before I'm going yeah. on air, and it's like three boards. Like, how am I gonna? Uh, I ended up just like BSing my way all the way through <laughs> for two minutes. But um, I remember when that system crashed, I had to go live on the desk with Carrie and just talk about weather for five minutes straight. Wow, it was the worst. And see, that's why I have a new appreciation for yeah. for weather and yeah. for weather presenters because it's a tough job. That's now it. that you get to do it, like I used to sit back in sports and you're like, oh, you got a prompter, you've got scripts. No scripts in weather, man. It's just, just it's sink or swim. That's what it is. It's it like, is. And but some people are good at it, and like you know, and some people like struggle, and it's it's a tough job. You're better off the top of your head, regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, like when you start when we finally got live cameras at at checks, which was last year. Yeah. And you were the first one to just go out there and use it, and then going live, you were like. By far the best one. So, yeah. um, and actually, you know, Renee Rogers is really good too. She, she's very yeah, good on that. It's a bit of a, it's a talent to, to go live with no scripts. Like so anyone can read, I think, but I think to actually sit and and to go live with no scripts, that's that's. See, tough. I can't read because of my ADD. I'll start reading a script. I'm I'm bored and I'm thinking about something completely different <laughs> in the middle of the script. I lose my intonation and I forget yeah. where I'm at, and then uh, I just screw it up. So I don't like reading. Remember, uh, we were gonna do uh, we were gonna for April Fools. We were gonna we we're gonna switch, switch it up. Oh, we should have. I wish we would have did that. Man, we did so many good things. Uh, I wonder we if did, I could come back in April and. We could still do that, dude. Come on and do the weather uh, be in awesome. April because you know what you're doing. Yeah, now. Exactly. you just come on and forecast the weather. That would be awesome. April okay. Fool's. Let, let's do. Okay. Well, well, now it's it's spoiled. Hopefully, well, yeah, people uh, will forget. Well, yeah, well, we don't have enough people watching this <laughs> podcast, anyways. <laughs> but um, okay. I, actually, probably more people that watch the podcast probably don't watch checks. Right? No, I would imagine. And you know what? I haven't gotten a call about the chicken wing eating contest this year. No, no, it's dead. I think it died. Wow! It went into into someone else's hands, and then it died because we had two two great years, and I still have the trophies in my house that you asked me to give back. Did and I? I like, give back the trophy? Well, I thought we'd use it again. Yeah, year nah, after. I, needed, <laughs> I wanted to keep it, and then uh, and then the third year when you left, they had it and no trophy. No trophy. So I should have a third oh. one, but it's not there. And then um, and then so that you're was the three time defending chicken wing eating champion. That's right. Yeah, no one's taking the belt. And I had a ringer set up for this year to try and take it away from me. Oh, yeah? Because I get really nervous. We even remember the year uh, I tried to get Mason? Yeah, Brent Mason, like the seven-foot-tall giant beast yeah, of a Yeah, he cop. couldn't beat you. No, no. It's all technique. It's not, it's not about how big you are or how hungry you are. It's all about how much of a disgusting swine you are. <laughs> it's pretty much the Is that Dave, Dave Kosky just made an appearance? No, he didn't. He didn't even call last week. So Dave yeah. Koski... Hey, by the way, speaking of moving, he still owes me a, a supper the time I helped him move. Really? Two years ago. Yeah, he oh. said he was going to take me out for supper. Never <laughs> happened. I remember hearing I about that him move. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was the worst mover. He moved like garbage bags. It was like, he just grabbed <laughs> stuff and he threw it in garbage bags. <laughs> it's like, it, I mean, opening drawers. He's opening drawers with like... With like his clothes and socks and stuff and underwear, just put him in garbage bags. He's like, here. I'm like, what? No boxes? No. Nope. <laughs> 
It's like David Koski's wow. the best. So uh, Koski didn't show up last week. He didn't call or text, and I thought I thought he's, he just doesn't like us anymore. There's a, there, that that maybe I did something. So I have to talk to him later and try and smooth things over. But uh, he he helped us uh, get a couple of great guests. He uh, he brought the Druser on. You know nice. John Drews? Yes. Wicked dude. And uh, hilarious stories. Uh, a couple of stories he didn't actually tell on the podcast. One of them about uh, Eric Lindros. Oh, yeah? Yeah, how uh, I think uh, uh, they would... Drewsy was the one who would organize people to go out and eat dinners every yeah. night. Like, come on, guys, we're going out for dinner. And they, like, bang on Lindros' door, open it up. And he'd be in a bubble bath, like, talking to his <laughs> mom on the phone. <laughs> The guys, they can't go today. It's like, <laughs> all right, Eric. But uh, stories like that. And then, uh, yeah, he also helped us get uh, Dan O'Toole on the show. So Koski's been uh, totally awesome. And we didn't even ask him. He's nice. just like, yeah, we're doing it. So very cool. But, um, yeah, so we, we've talked for, for God, like like half an hour now. So wow. I think it's, it's almost too long. But um, just uh, from me to you, congratulations on, uh, on making the big move to CTV. It's not, like, um, it's not like you're getting paid a million bucks to go over there, but you're going over there to try something new. And, uh, and I'm sh- like, I've watched, I watch you all the time because uh, I, I follow you on Twitter. And then uh, CTV Kitchener, who I also follow now, will post your videos. And, like, you guys retweet each other. So I always watch your videos. And it's cool to AC. I saw your first weather and I thought you were really good and then um, and then I've seen a few of your stories I almost that you've pissed been doing. my pants there in the first weather really I'm so nervous yeah, how terrifying is oh, it it's so terrifying because like well, you don't know what's going to happen like is your boards going to be there like I remember just sweating I had like huge pit stain like <laughs> I took my jacket <laughs> off and it was just like huge pit stains I was like holy like this is tough that's why I said I, I, I appreciate like all the years you got you doing it and Jay and like everybody else like it's tough well now, now you got to start throwing things in but don't put a picture of Miley Cyrus licking a sledgehammer <laughs> in your boards no okay you, mix it up a little bit <laughs> don't mix it up too much because you could almost lose your that job was, that was a classic it was a classic night though <laughs> <laughs> and I started adding pictures in uh, at the eleven o'clock, like checks blue and putting those. Well, remember weird the one you showed in? of me? You're like, you're like, here's Tyler Calvert, and it was like, was it like, <laughs> it was like your uncle Dave? It was my uncle Dave <laughs> because uh, my young uncle Dave looks just like you at this age. So uh, I, I put up uh, the uncle Dave picture quite a bit. You know, maybe I'll do that on Monday for you too. But um, either way, uh, you're gonna stick around and have supper after. Absolutely. All right. So we're. Uh, so what's coming up next? Uh, coming up next, we got the May Hemingways. Nice. And they're they're gonna play some good tunes. Trust me. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. All right, Tyler. Uh, and again, thanks for helping me move. Yeah. Unlike I, Koski. I think you. I think I still owe you two more moves. You moved me every time I moved. To I, I think I did. That's, that was actually nice that you remember. Yeah. See, so that's the it's only not like reason. We're keeping, I, no, no one's keeping score or anything. It's, it's the only reason. See, my I, move today was hard because of the snow. Yeah. I move in the summer only. Yeah. Like, I'm an August mover. You are a February mover, which makes you a dick. So that covers for two moves. Yeah. But uh, at the same time. See, I was supposed to be, like, my realtor told me that their house was going to sell in three weeks. Right. So, like, I shouldn't have been moving. I should have been moving in November. Right. Not, you know, February. We almost had as much snow in November as we did now. But so my house took me, the house took so long to sell, so here we are. Well, here we are, and finally we're getting you the hell out of Peterborough. Thank God. Thank God. I think <laughs> we need a break from you for a little bit. We'll bring you back for the 60th anniversary. Are you going to be here for it? When's that? I think it's March, <laughs> or March or April or something. Uh, I don't know. I have to, I have my March schedule. Like, I have, like, so Nah, yeah, yeah, no, you're a big shot. Like, you're a big shot. 10 days in a row. I get it. I get it. You're by the way, if you now. worked, by the way, when a person works 10 days in a row, that ninth day is killer. Is it? Yeah, like, you want to, you want to, like, jump out a window. Jump. It's, oh, yeah, it's like. It's so terrible. Yeah, you, you might need to talk to someone. Uh, like, it's hard. Keep yourself inside. Yeah, you know, people need a break. Just give me a call. Anytime you feel like jumping out okay. the window. No, I'm just saying when you're wrapping working that, rope that long around your head. stretch, even though it's like television, it's tough. Yeah. The 10th day, you're just ready to, for it to end. Well, I'm lucky that I still work five days, and I'll continue to do so for the <laughs> yeah, next I re- little while. I recommend it. All right. Tyler Calver, episode 10 of PTBO Canada Live. Thank you very much for joining me. And uh, you know what? Uh, May Hemingways are coming up next. We could probably do this for another three hours, but no, the May Hemingways have to come up next. All right, thank you. Thank you. PTBL Canada Live is brought to you by Kawartha TV and Stereo. They're on Lansdowne Street at Park, and you know what? They are just one of those great stores. It's the kind of place where you walk in, and you've got someone helping you right away. Now, not bugging you, but helping you find exactly what you need. And on top of that, they pretty much have everything that you need, all the way up from the high-end televisions right down to some of the bargains that you're looking for as well. But they don't just stop there. They have full home entertainment theaters and uh, crazy massage chairs. You can go there and try it out. Um, I went there 
there and had to sleep for a little bit. I don't know if they'll let you do that, but you know what? They are really nice, so they might let you do that. But just keep in mind, Kawartha TV and Stereo, they've helped uh, bring us a bunch of equipment to make this podcast happen. So that's why they're here, and thank you so much for being a part of this. Welcome back to BTBO Canada Live. Joining me now, the May Hemingways with a with an add on, of course. But uh, welcome to the show, Bench. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thanks. So um, checking you guys out. I mean, you played all over Peterborough, but one of the one of the interesting things that I saw is that you guys have played Dawson City, Yukon. Yeah, not as um, the May Hemingways, but uh, usually May Hemingways is a duo, me and Josh Fewings. But since we're doing it acoustically, I have Dylan here. Anyway, me and Josh have played uh, up in the Yukon a couple times, yeah. What was that like? It's fun. We were up there for the Dawson City Music Festival. It's right. pretty a pretty epic event. It sounds, yeah. it sounds like it would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's cool. So how long has uh, the Mayhem Ingrays, how long have you guys been around? Um, two years about, yeah. Yeah, and um, I mean, if you go on YouTube and type your name and you guys pop up all over the place and you become very popular in the Peterborough area, one of the one of the best things I find about you guys, I love the accordion and uh, and Cajun style music, and nice. you guys cover that. How did you how did you get into this? Into like into the accordion and Cajun. Um, I don't know. I always loved Cajun music. Accordion, I started playing because I thought it sounded like the bagpipes. I don't know. Just a weird thing. You yeah. just like I just love instruments and music, so just tinker with stuff, and you end up. Playing accordion. And you, you, you play the, uh, you play the, um, well, first you play the banjo as well, you play the mm-hmm. guitar, and you also play, um, I think, uh, the pedal bass? Yeah, bass, bass pedals. It's like a, it's a bass synth, and it's an octave, it's like an octave of a keyboard, but it's big enough for you to play with your feet, so. Oh, really? That's our, uh, bass sound. <laughs> and you guys have a big show coming up at Market Hall, right? Yeah, April 24th with uh, Ken Tizard. That's uh, our next show in Peterborough. Uh, mm-hmm. have, have you ever played Market Hall before? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's an amazing venue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's I'm looking forward to yeah, having a nice sounding room to play in for a change you know very cool yeah um i was telling you earlier i love your uh, your version anyone anyone who likes uh, bruce springsteen um go out and check out look up uh, may hemingways and atlantic city you guys do a great cover version nice. of that yeah and uh, the video is quite nice as well i don't know who shot that yeah video, jeremy kelly yeah you, yeah he does some great work around town as mm-hmm. well so yeah he, we've been uh, really fortunate to get to work with him doing all those videos for youtube and stuff all right well, I'm not going to keep you too long on the interview side of things because I definitely want to hear you guys play, but I wanted to thank you for coming on the podcast. Yeah, thanks and, for having me. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's take it away. All right. I'm going to do the song Wanderers. To the river, we put a raft into the stream. We didn't bother paddling, cause we let the meander in. We bumped into a sandbar, we jumped up and ran to the shore. We found a feather and a pretty shell, we pushed up and we floated more. Cause we wanderers, we wonder We see small towns in the great land We see cities in their fancy clothes We see sickness and the hunger We see the kings up upon their throne we're moving through it We're trying to stay clean and free But we're the cousin of the beggar Once removed on the family tree Cause we wander We wander We wander We wander City, 
But you'll never know our name Very soon and pretty We need use a megaphone to beg for change I talk to my compatriot We sit down upon the curb We hear the crowds rushing by Which one of us is more observed Cause we wanderers We wanderers We wanderers We The May Hemingways, put your hands together. Thank you. That wraps up episode 10 of the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Absolutely fantastic. All right. Thank you. All right. That does it. I'm almost done. Can we, can, we, can we see the caricatures? I want to wrap it up with them. All right. I'm going to. Look at that. It's like, a, it's like a collage. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That is awesome. Fantastic. Okay, that wraps it up. Thank you very much. Everyone's on. Where were you last week? Um, I believe I was in Toronto with a friend dropping him off at the airport. And yeah, that was uh that was Jay on right, right? Uh, we go we'll go with Jay on right, but <laughs> <laughs> They only see me in, in ones. They don't see me in, in, in together. Because I wanted to do a follow-up. How, how did you like your time with uh, your buddy Dan O'Toole back in town? Uh, I always love seeing Dan. Uh, I'm glad he got to be on the podcast. I uh, got to spend some good time with him. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of our time was at the event, and we didn't get a chance to really spend a, a much time getting back acquainted and, and, and uh, have a good chat. But other than that, our, our way up to the Toronto was, uh, you know, we got to... Hang out. It was because it was such a bad snowstorm that it took us about three hours even to get to Toronto. Oh, was so. it? Was it? Yeah, yeah, it was bad the next day, yeah. wasn't it? It snowed all night the night before, right? But, like when we were at the rink. Yeah. I think his feet were still cold from sitting on that ice. For oh, his 10. feet were so cold. <laughs> Didn't he have the coldest little tootsies? <laughs> yeah, it's, sitting on that. That that was a great. When we raised twenty thousand dollars with those jerseys, that's a pretty amazing deal. A lot to you and Dan for thank you for doing that and. Uh, um, he, he, he just he could, his feet were so cold because he's he's only he's only used to this, the, the 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 fluffy sand of uh, California, right? He, he had to sacrifice his feet for 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 cancer that oh, night. He did, yeah, and he did a great job at doing it. Yeah, he did. Um, so, anyways, well, so we've got that in the books now. What are you doing with your time? You spent so much time planning <laughs> Pink in the Rink. What's next? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Matt's over there. Maybe he's got something on the books that he I need helps with. But uh, Who's Matt. Matt from the Cancer Society oh, there yet, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I'm I'm a little hiatus. Uh, we are always, obviously you know we're opening the new bar and hopefully be open on the seventeenth. Yep. So hopefully that'll come and be uh, fruition on the seventeenth. But uh, other than that, that's that. Trying to get make the you know. Uh, You're a busy guy, and you know what <laughs> you know what. Pink of the rink was um, it was it, it was a, it was a large undertaking. So you need a rest. You need to <laughs> to chill out. Well, actually, I do, but I, what I find is that when I start doing that, then I, I get pretty antsy, so I need to find something that will fill that time. But I also want to say thank you very much for your hard work and what you did and being there and, and, and being a big part of that uh, that, that event for for, the, for us at the... Uh, it was trans- it was trans- fun, but, you know, for the most part, I'll do anything for you, Koski. <laughs> I do, well, because you ask me to do lots of stuff, and I always do it, except yeah. for a couple things. Yeah, well, that's all you can do. You I'm do married. Them. I can't do that. And you got a kid. I got a kid, so I can't. I can't do. I all forget the being you a single me. man that I, you know, yeah, I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. What is that like? Well, you know, being a single man can has its ups and downs, but uh, for you know, I don't know anything different, so I can't tell you. Oh, you've had you've had your times, and you know, the, 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 they will come back uh, whether <laughs> you want them to or not. <laughs> this guy's on the market, ladies, and God damn it, if you don't try and snatch him up, just uh, you know what? Some people just aren't smart enough. I think. You, are you on Tinder? Uh, 
I, 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 I can't <laughs> use that finger thing. I, can't, I just can't swipe left or right. I, it always fucks me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're not on Tinder. Yeah. I haven't even seen what it looks like yet. It, that thing scares me. I, I had a couple of friends that were on it, and I, I think some of the people that work for me, they're on it, and they... Uh, yeah, uh, I think we call one Tinderella because she's on it so much. Oh, I, I know, Shan. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right, uh, David Koski, once again, thanks for being here for the podcast. And hopefully we'll see you next week. If not. Oh, I'll be around next week. Right. Ooh, I'll have to race back my brother's stag parties next weekend oh, in Toronto. God. You're going to be in some shape. Yeah. I'm excited for that. All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Mike. We'll All talk right. soon. Close it right.